Okay, let's look at a particular 3D system that's really of interest for us to simulate, and that's a room or acoustic space like this one. Let's assume a rectangular room, 40 by 50 feet, with a 30 foot high ceiling. I know that's a really high ceiling, but it turns out that the 3 by 4 by 5 ratio is highly desirable in acoustics. In fact, many speaker enclosure boxes obey these ratios of 3, 4, 5. If all of these surfaces are fairly reflective, we will get strong standing waves between each parallel pair of walls and floor and ceiling pair. Those standing waves should occur at 11 Hz in all of its harmonics, 14 Hz in all of its harmonics, and 19 Hz in all of its harmonics. We really don't want a modal solution for this system, because there are literally thousands of modes, and also it's not an instrument or object that we whack once and let it ring and die away. We really want an impulse response that we can convolve sounds with, or a set of filters that matches the impulse response that we can run any signal through. So let's look at some Chuck code that uses three delay lines to model our rectangular room. Yes, with only three delay lines, we can begin to build a pretty convincing model of our rectangular room. We can set their lengths to 88, 71, and 53 milliseconds, hook their outputs back up to their inputs, and set their gains to something quite a bit less than one to model the attenuation of sound as it travels, spreads, and reflects. We feed a signal into it, in this case our computer mic, and mix their outputs together. This might sound a little boingy and bright, like a pure rectangular reflective room would be. Walls and air tend to absorb higher frequencies more than low, so we should add some low pass filters into the delay loops in order to make it more realistic. Let's do this now. So in this new version of our reverb code, we've added an array of three one-pole filters for low pass. We're going to put those in the loop to model the losses that happen at high frequencies in real acoustical environments. We also set the pole of the low pass filter. Let's run it and see the difference. Wow, it sounds a lot more like a real room. It's still a little springy and interesting because we only have three delay lines, but it's getting better. Of course, there are paths for sound in a room other than in the three principal directions, but the three delay lines capture the dominant modes. There are many more things we could add to make a better room model, or reverberator, or reverb as it's often called. But for now, I'll point out that Chuck has a number of built-in reverberators, including JC Rev, named after John Chowning of Stanford's Karma, NREV, which stands for new, which it was when it was invented, and also some external chug-in reverbs such as G-verb. These have parameters to control them such as mixture of dry to wet or reverb signal. G-verb has tons of controls over early and late reflections from walls, reverb time, filters for absorption, and other things.